So welcome back for another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning With, and today our with is Tom Nixon. So Tom, can we get started by telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, I work for Fresno Unified School District. It's the third largest district in California with 74,000 students. I manage online learning and library services. Uh, recent events have, have conflated my, my, my job uh, greatly because online learning and library services are, are doing much these days uh, together. I am also the, the author, co-author of a number of books on distance learning, online learning programs. That probably gives you enough, I would think. Perfect. All right. So I know I've known you now, Tom, for a long time, and I know you've, you've worked with and interacted with a, a lot of school leaders um, over the years. And, and the nature of the what we're in now, where we're missing essentially uh, a couple of weeks for the school, and then we've got this really unique way of delivering education for what might be the rest of this school year. What advice would you give to school leaders on sort of how to think about how this school year is ending and how the next school year might begin? So I, I think a couple things. I have what I've been calling and no one else has been calling, but what I've been calling sort of the, the give a little grace plan. A lot of people having to ramp up. That is students, that is teachers, that is administrators, that is school boards. Uh, I think locally we've done a really good job with this, uh, but we have over a decade of working with online learning. Not all districts have that. Um, you, know, you have to remember that that 95%, more than 95% of teachers and students just really haven't operated in this way. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for the opportunities it provides. I think people should be careful that it's not all about the opportunity and that it has to be more about the day to day as well. Um, also, you know, online courses at high schools uh, typically only are our credit recovery. You know, that's, that, that's an important group of students, but relatively small um, out of our district. You know, maybe that's 1,500, 2,000 students a semester, this kind of thing. Some of the advice I would give is, is the governor gave some really good advice about grading. Um, and I, I think you got, you have, you kind of have to stick with that in a sense is, uh, mostly they said, take that third quarter grade and run with it unless someone wants to earn a better grade. And that makes, uh, inherent sense to me, uh, is, is that, uh, have, having having a grade that they can fall back on because this is hard. This is hard for everybody. And so having a grade that, that they can work from, maybe they're happy with a C, maybe because they just want to get through grad, to graduation or something. Um, also in terms of, of next year, I've been thinking about that a little bit. Again, a little grace. You know, the, the nice thing, air quotes, nice thing about this is for the fall, we have had this experience of the spring. So this, this can look very different uh, in the fall just because, you know, it's not about we need to get devices to all these kids because we will have done that by and large. Uh, in our own district, we re-imaged 40,000 uh, laptops uh, to roll out to kids who didn't have them. I guess building up on that, as you think about the next school year, I mean, pandemics are such that there are going to be local flare-ups that are going to happen. There is likely going to be a second wave that might come through. So the likelihood that some districts and maybe even some entire states have to close down wholesale again uh, for four, six weeks um, is probably fairly likely, at least in some areas. As you work with your school leaders, what sort of things are you telling them now that they can do to make this a little more seamless the next time it happens? Because we were sort of all caught scrambling this time. 
Um, but hopefully next time will be a better experience. So what would you suggest to folks that, that they do to make it a little bit better experience next time? You know, I, I think uh, we're still a little bit a story of the have and have nots. I, I think uh, not to toot Fresno Unified's horn, but Fresno Unified, you know, Fresno is a poor place in a, in a, a poor county agricultural, even though we have half a million people. Um, it is possible to ramp up. It is possible to get devices in the hands of kids. Does it take reallocation? Sure. Uh, but you, that has to be job one. That absolutely just has to be. Um, in terms of the fall, I, I would hope most people uh, approach the fall thinking that that's probably the reality. Um, we were caught flat-footed once, I think, and the rest of the country as well. Um, you know, I watch the news. I, I think the odds are, are actually pretty good that we're going to at least have local flare-ups in different places. Um, and so I think you have a plan in place for that. Um, we've had the trial by fire, though. You know, th this spring has, has been uh, a place for us to plan in effect. Uh, come the fall, it should be um, a little bit more, okay, what do we need to add on? We've gotten devices into kids' hands. And if you don't, that's your summer job, I, I would think. Uh, but we've gotten devices in, into kids' hands. Uh, probably most places need to ramp up the type of professional learning they do. Uh, we've started a, uh, our IT and ed tech folks um, have started uh, a series of webinars and are getting a lot of teacher buy-in for those. Uh, uh, our teachers have just been amazing in, in grabbing on and running with it. Um, I don't know that most people necessarily have a written plan for the fall, but I, I think that, that most are, are taking the, the learnings from what we've done and are, are moving forward with that. Well, thank you very much, Tom. This has been another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning, and today our with has been Tom Nixon.